Aside from your efficient admin and communication skills, they are very supportive on a professional level, but at the same time, you can feel that personal touch. Uh, they care about you, not because that's what they do, but because it's who they are. And I think that's a real quality that you can find in your consultancy and feel people really work with you. I Kumusta naman yung experience nyo with Kanata Education, syempre? Tinulungan mo. Oo, alam mo. In all honesty, sobrang laki yung tulong sa amin ng Kanata kasi step by step, yung pagtulong nila, ramdam mo talaga yung genuine concern and support nila. Hindi nga sila yung agency na basta makakuha ng pera or makapagpasa lang or ma-check lang ng document, sila, toro sila ma-check ng document. Makulit, makulit sila ma-check. Makulit sila, matay sila, they see to it that everything is in order before they launch the visa application. So, alam mo yun, hindi lang yung feeling na, hindi lang yung feeling na, ano, may trust ka, pero feeling mo rin, sana atag ka sa application na, kasi alam mo na, na-check na maayos, at talaga na, pinag-aanan ng order ng document. Aside from their efficient admin and communication skills, they are very supportive on a professional level, but at the same time, you can feel that personal touch. Uh, they care about you, not because that's what they do, but because it's who they are. And I think that's a real quality that you can find in consultancy and you can really see it and really work with you.
Kumusta naman yung experience nyo with Kanata Education, siyempre? Tinulungan mo ka, alam mo. Oh, alam mo. In all honesty, sobrang laki yung tulungan kami ng Kanata. Kasi step by step, yung pagtulong nila, ramdam mo talaga yung genuine concern and support nila. Hindi na sila yung agency na basta makakuha ng pera or makakapagkata lang or ma-check lang ng document sila. Sorry, sinamag-check ng document. Makulit. Makulit sila. Mag- Makulit sila. Matay sila. They see to it that everything is in order before they launch the uh, visa application. So, alam mo yun, hindi lang yung feeling na hindi lang yung feeling na may trust ka. Pero feeling mo rin kanata ka sa application na hmm. kasi alam mo na na-check yung maayos at talaga na pinag-aana ng oras yung hmm. document. Hmm. All right. Good evening, everyone. I am Francis, and welcome to Canada's Educational Consultancy Services free webinar about study in Canada. I I hope everyone is safe and COVID-free in this rainy Friday night. Ah, uh, wow, 58 uh, attendees. Uh, we are jam-packed tonight, guys. So uh, I know everyone's are everyone's is excited to know the offers of the schools and also the services of Canada. Okay, our first speaker for tonight is the representative of the one of the prestigious university. Yes, university. You heard it right. In the in British Columbia, in the province of British Columbia. Without further ado, let us all welcome. Miss Regine Molina. Hi, Regine. Hi, Sir Francis. Thank you for the warm introduction. So without further ado, I will be sharing my screen to all of you. Okay, I believe you are now seeing my screen. Okay, so again, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for an info session hosted by Kanata. And yes, I hope you're all healthy and safe during this trying time. So before we begin, let me introduce myself. My name is Regine Molina, KPU's field representative based here in the Philippines. Um, Today, I'll be presenting exciting opportunities for you when you study at KPU. I'll be very happy to answer all your questions um, right after um, Northern Lights College. So in the past few years, we've witnessed how the applications from the Philippines increased per semester. Actually, um, prior to the pandemic, um, it was 
uh, less than the numbers that we are receiving right now. Mas, mas dumami yung applications na receive namin during the pandemic. And we are trying to keep these numbers up um, to accommodate more Filipino students, more Filipino communities who aspire to study and eventually work in British Columbia. So yung nakakatawa dito sa KPU, hindi ka mag -iisa. There are lots of Filipino communities in BC. At yung numbers of Filipino students who are applying at KPU, mas nag increase talaga siya per semester. So if you're looking into applying to KPU, Kanata is one of our trusted partner agents in the Philippines. So just reach out to them and they will be very happy to help you all throughout your application process. Okay, now I would like to present some facts about KPU. So here at KPU, we focus on hands-on learning. And we are a teaching-focused university. And every year, 20,000 students, including domestic and international students, are admitted at KPU. As for our programs, we offer over 140 unique programs that you can choose from. That's from across uh, various disciplines. And I'll go into detail of those programs in the next sections of this presentation. We are also the third largest university in Metro Vancouver, with over 200,000 alumni over the past few years. More importantly, I know most of you who are attending this session right now are looking for a designated learning institution, or DLI, in Canada that can help you obtain a postgraduate work permit right after your studies. And yes, we are one of the DLIs and we are an accredited public university. So all our programs are eligible for a PGWP. Before we proceed, I'd like to share with you a short video of our students for you to have an overview of what it is like to study and how fun it is to stay at KPU.
Okay, there you go. So, puro good vibes lang tayo at KPU. And of course, these were taken prior to the pandemic. So, I know all of us are really hoping na matapos na yung pandemic. So, we can get to see more of these student engaging activities in the very near future. Okay, so here at KPU, we will help you develop the hands-on skills that you need for the career that you want and gain relevant experience while you make valuable connections. KPU is the only polytechnic university in Canada. But ano nga ba yung ibig sabihin ng polytechnic? So we highly focus on hands-on um, skills, practical skills of students, applied learning, and um, actual experiences. We ensure that students gain the know-how skills for them to become ready for the job market right after graduation. Now, let's talk a little bit about location. As you know, KP is located in British Columbia, which is one of the top destinations of Filipinos in Canada. And here are just a few of the many reasons why. Okay, first, it is one of the mildest climates in Canada. Second, it is safe multicultural and has a laid-back lifestyle. So, you know, a multicultural country and province is a very important factor, mostly for students and immigrants, because basically that would be your second home. That's, that's where you're going to start your new journey. So here in BC, you'll get to meet people from different nationalities, which is a good thing because you'll get to learn from their, their perspectives. You become open to a larger network you gain understanding from different cultural perspectives, and of course, you make new friends. Metro Vancouver is also one of the fastest growing economies in Canada. And it's also very important because it generates a lot of job opportunities for students like you. And as of June 2021, um, British Columbia has the second highest minimum wage in Canada, which is at 15.20 Canadian dollars per hour. It is also one of the highest quality of life in North America, and British Columbia has magnificent oceans and mountains. As you know, Canada has always been at the forefront in protecting the environment. Okay, our campuses. We have five campuses. We have one in Richmond, we have Civic Plaza, we have KPU Suri, we have KPU Tech, and we have KPU Langley. So our campus are connected to major transit hubs and popular routes. We also have our free inter-campus shuttle that runs between Surrey, Cloverdale, and Langley. Just to give you a brief description of each campuses, um, KPU Richmond over here, it is located just 15 minutes away from the city of Vancouver. And this convenient campus is home to the internationally renowned Wilson School of Design and unique programs like acupuncture and agriculture. KPU Civic Plaza over here, is our newly opened campus in 2019. So this is a sleek and modern campus in downtown Suri that's dedicated to post-baccalaureate and graduate level studies. So if you're looking into applying into our post-baccalaureate diploma and graduate diploma programs, your classes will be here in KPU Civic Plaza. Okay, next is KPU Suri. It is often known as the main campus so students come here to study a variety of sciences, the arts, and other business programs. KPU Tech here is located in Cloverdale, and um, it allows students to gain hands-on experience at the auto shop, fire barns, and assorted trade workshops. And lastly, we have KPU Langley. This massive campus has a variety of unique facilities, including brewing labs, greenhouses, and music studios. Okay, here are several pictures of our KPU campuses. Okay, next, this is the Wilson School of Design, which is one of the best schools for design in Canada. We also offer one of only two fashion design degrees in the country and one of the first product design degrees in Canada. So again, this is KPU Civic Plaza. It is the campus dedicated for graduate and post-baccalaureate diploma programs. Okay. KP is also known for sustainable farming. So we offer a bachelor's degree in sustainable agricultural farming, and we want students to experience growing crops, which is a testament of KPU's applied learning 
and hands-on teaching to students. Okay. Here is KPU's Brew Lab. So KPU offers the very famous brewery diploma, and we are the only one that offers brewing and brewery operations diploma in British Columbia. This is the main campus in Surrey, the tech campus interior, the gathering place. So you can come here to hang out with your friends or do, do your schoolwork. Well, of course, after the pandemic, here is our newly renovated Surrey Library. Um, this is also the main campus in Surrey. This is the beautiful Langley campus that is mostly for science and horticulture programs. And of course, KPU Tech. Now let's move on to the seven faculties in KPU. So we have the Academic and Career Advancement. We have the Faculty of the Arts, Business, Design, health, science and horticulture, and trades and technology. So first, we have the Faculty of the Arts. Under this faculty, um, you'll get to explore a range of disciplines, collaborate with other students, and enhance your skills as a critical thinker and a creative problem solver. In this faculty, we have several unique programs, such as criminology, journalism, policy studies, political science, psychology, anthropology, and many more. And we are the only one that offers the undergraduate journalism degree in the South Fraser region. Okay, the very famous faculty of business. In this faculty, you'll get the practical experience, professional connections, and, ext and extensive knowledge to succeed in your business venture. So whether you would want to launch a breakthrough innovation, operate a market leading company, or advance the future of cybersecurity, you can achieve that in this faculty. So there are around 22 measures that you can choose from, which again, are very popular to Filipino students. And over 10,000 job openings for accountants and financial auditors are expected to open between now and 2029. In terms of recognition, our School of Business received accreditation from the Council for Business Schools and Programs. Okay, the Faculty of Design. So in this faculty, you can prepare for a career in various design fields like graphic design, fashion marketing, technical apparel, product design, and many more. So we have the very famous fashion design program. Our interior design is the first one that was recognized in BC and it really has a high reputation in the province. The Wilson School of Design is the best overall fashion school in Canada. Um, however, our design programs are open every fall intake or every September. So the Faculty of Health, this is very relevant during this challenging time. So as you know, the, as the health and wellness sector continues to grow and evolve, so does the need for qualified professionals. Under this faculty, we only offer the traditional Chinese medicine or the acupuncture program for international students. So it is a growing field in BC and we are the only university in BC that offers this program. So other uh, related programs to health would be health sciences, general science and biology. Okay, next is the faculty of science and horticulture. Under this faculty, you'll get to study the latest discoveries and theories while you gain hands-on experience in the lab. So we offer mathematics, physics, and we usually make them more practical for students. We also have the Environmental Protection Technology Program. So again, as you know, Canada is one of the leading countries that promote environmental preservation, climate change management, and so jobs in this field are really growing. Of course, the Faculty of Trades and Technology. In this faculty, you'll get the specialized training, experience, and foundational knowledge to put your talents to work in the trades. So we have the Mechatronics and Advanced Manufacturing Technology Program. Okay, so this is the part where students become more curious about. So if you already have a bachelor's degree in the Philippines and you're looking into study opportunities to upgrade and advance your career, you can apply 
for our post-baccalaureate and graduate diploma programs. So here are your options. Under the Faculty of Business, we have Accounting, Operations and Supply Chain Management, Technical Management and Services, and Human Resources Management. Under the Faculty of Design, we have the Technical Apparel Design. And then we have the Graduate Diploma Programs, which are um, Global Business Management and Green Business Management and Sustainability. Again, these are very famous to international students. So, it is important to note that these graduate um, diploma programs are not yet equivalent to an MBA, but it is one step closer for you to obtain your MBA. So I'll discuss more of that in the larger sections of this presentation. So basically, most students would ask, ano nga ba yung difference between post-baccalaureate and graduate diploma programs? So post-baccalaureate programs are more hands-on. They are professional credential focused while graduate diplomas require a lot more work and laddered into a master's degree. So 80% of KP's undergraduate credential programs offer work integrated learning opportunities. As a polytechnic university, KPU is dedicated to ensuring you that you get a wealth of hands-on experience that enhances your education. At KPU, we usually teach soft skills that future employers in Canada are looking for in a fresh graduate. So this helps students to become more highly employable and they usually earn that edge compared to other graduates with limited technical skills. So basically, I would say it's not just about the degree, it's not just about the credential, but it's also about the experience, the actual skills that you need to possess in order to become fit to the job that you're applying for. And we are committed to that goal for our students. So our class sizes are really small. We only allow a maximum of 35 students per class. And KPU allows students to engage fully in the discussions and better connect with their classmates and instructors. Okay. So the academic levels, I'll just talk a little bit of this. So we offer a wide range of programs at KPU, and they all fall into one of the following levels. We have preparatory, undergraduate, graduate, and vocational. Within these levels, a program may be open or limited intake. So what is the difference between an open and limited intake? An open intake means that we have more seats available for international students, while a limited intake, it means that um, we have a maximum seat capacity for international students. So you would, before you apply, you should know whether your program is an open or limited intake because the deadlines vary from each other. And it's important to know that for a limited intake program, it's always advisable for students to apply ahead of time because slots for those programs fill up very quickly. Okay, so for preparatory program, it's the specific post-secondary program below, below the bachelor's degree level. For the undergraduate program, um, this is the post-secondary education at the university level. For graduate program, of course, these are post-secondary programs above the bachelor's degree level. And vocational programs are programs that combine skills and knowledge specific to a particular industry. Okay, so this is about the master's degree that I was pertaining to earlier. So most students are also curious whether KPU offers a master's program. Unfortunately, at this point, we don't, but we do have a pathway for you to earn your master's, which is in complement to our graduate diploma program. So ano nga ba ulit yung graduate diploma ng KPU? We have two programs, the Global Business Management or the green business management and sustainability. So if you'll take any of those programs, you actually have the option to ladder into a master's degree. So what are the requirements? You just have to take five additional courses. So you can take that online. You don't have to fly to Switzerland to take your classes. So what I'm talking about is the KPU SUMAS partnership. SUMAS is a business school in Switzerland. It helps our graduate students to earn dual credentials. So, ano tong dual credentials? 
First, you'll obtain a graduate diploma from KPU, and the second credential is a master's degree from SUMAS. It is actually faster and cheaper. So if our tuition fee for the graduate diploma is about 27,000 Canadian dollars for the whole duration of the program, this ladderized program costs about 35,000 Canadian dollars. So that's still cheap for a master's degree program. However, this is not mandatory. You may opt to stop studying right after you obtain your graduate diploma at KPU. Okay, let's talk about the estimated costs for the first year. You can expect to pay um, between 14,000 Canadian dollars to 22,000 Canadian dollars for a full-time course load of nine to 15 credits per semester. So let's say, for example, for a semester with nine credits, the estimated tuition is about 7,000 Canadian dollars. It will depend, of course, um, with the program. So this sample computation is designed for post-baccalaureate and graduate diploma programs. So if you're looking into applying to a bachelor's degree, you can expect a little higher than this. It is important to note that um, KPU, even though we are a university, we offer one of the most affordable tuition fee rates in Metro Vancouver. So you can also expect about um, 1500 Canadian dollars for learning materials. However, uh, a lot of our programs do not require you to buy textbooks. So that's a huge save for you. For this learning materials, it would include um, course materials, school supplies, and other course related fees. And then for the living costs, again, um, this would depend, especially when you're living with a family member, a friend, or a relative, and it would also depend on your lifestyle. But the estimated cost would be about 15,000 Canadian dollars. That includes housing, utilities, food, health insurance, transportation, and other personal expenses. Now, if you would like to know the estimated tuition fee of your desired program per semester, you can visit um, this link. It's www.kpu.ca slash tuition estimator. Now, the KPU student life. Here you'll see happy faces from our KPU students who are very active in student engagements and activities. So, of course, these were taken again before the pandemic, and we hope that we'll gra gradually see more of this this fall 2021 because we are holding both on campus and online classes starting this September. Okay, so what can you do at KPU outside your studies? You can do volunteer work. You can join the Kwantlen Student Association. You can stay active with sports and recreation and discover a lot more student clubs and organizations. Now I'll be sharing with you briefly the admission requirements. For an undergraduate program, so it's, it includes bachelor's degree, associate's degree, diploma, or certificate. Um, the admission requirement is successful completion of grade 12. But if you graduated from the old system, which is grade 10, or sorry, high school, for year in high school, you should have at least 24 undergraduate credits. So that's equivalent to one year in college. And then for post-baccalaureate diploma and graduate diploma programs, a bachelor's degree from a recognized post-secondary institution is a requirement. And when you're also applying to our post-bac or graduate diploma, it's important to note to check uh, the website, the KPU website for any other additional requirements because this is an advanced level. So it's important that you check whether that program would require other requirements. And then of course, the English proficiency requirement. Most students would ask, um, tumatanggap po ba ang KPU ng Certification of English as a medium of instruction? Unfortunately, we don't accept that. We can accept IELTS, TOEFL, or temporarily Duolingo. So we are accepting Duolingo, which is um, more convenient and more efficient until May 2022 next year. We don't have official announcements yet whether we will continue accepting Duolingo until fall 2022, but for May intake, we are accepting that. 
now when you're ready to apply, here are the steps that you need to follow. Well, Kanata can help you out with this, so don't hesitate to reach out to them. First, you'll have to submit your application online through our website. So that's www.kpu.ca slash apply. And you'll need to settle the application fee of 120 Canadian dollars. On average, you will receive your next steps letter from us two to three business days right after you submit your application. So this next steps letter will tell you how to access our portal using your KPU account and the list of requirements that you need to submit to us. Okay, let's move on to step three. You'll need to submit your complete documents. Upon submission of all documents, the processing normally takes four to six weeks, largely depends on how fast you submit your requirements. Then if you're qualified, that's the time when you will receive the offer from us and you'll need to pay the confirmation deposit of 2000 to 2500 Canadian dollars depending on your program. And then um, as soon as we validated your payment, um, you will receive your letter of acceptance or the LOA three to four business days after settling your confirmation deposit. So here are the application deadlines. So again, before you apply, you should know when is the last day of submission and whether your program is an open or limited intake program. Okay, let's talk about the spring intake. Most of our post-baccalaureate diplomas and graduate diploma programs are full for the spring intake. So we are currently accepting applications for summer intake. But for open intake programs like diploma in business management or diploma in business administration, we are still accepting applications until December 1 for the spring intake. Okay, so this is the official Facebook group of KPU, KPU Philippines. So that's www.facebook.com slash kpu.ph. So feel free to like and follow up our page for major updates and announcements. Okay. In closing, for application-related inquiries, feel free to email me uh, at regine.molina at kpu.ca. So I believe that's it for my presentation and um, we will now open the floor for Northern Lights Colleges. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Ms. Regine, for that very detailed uh, presentation about KPU or Kwantlen Polytechnic University. Okay, hold on to your questions because later uh, we're going to have a Q&A with Ms. Regine and she's available to answer all of your inquiries about KPU. Okay, we will now move to the northern part of British Columbia. Our next speaker is the in-country rep of the Northern Lights College located in Dawson's Creek and Fort St. John. Let us all welcome Ms. Jamie Rojo. Hi, Jamie. Good evening. Uh, Miss Jamie, I think you don't have your audio. But now. How about now? Yes, we can hear you now, Jamie. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Okay, again, my name is Jamie. I'm the representative of Northern Lights College for Southeast Asia. And um, I would like to introduce first my colleague before I proceed with the presentation. Nash is here with me tonight. Um, you will be encountering him, especially for a general increase, because all the inquiry from the Philippines, generally speaking, goes to him. So hi, Nash. Just say, briefly say hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting us, Kanata, um, to this event. And I uh, hope everyone is safe. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, let me quickly share my screen to start my presentation. Okay, can you confirm if you can see my presentation? I believe so. Um, 
Okay, so we are named after the Northern Lights, as you can see with the background of my presentation, because you can actually experience the Northern Lights or the Aurora Borealis in our region. So if, you know, Northern Lights is um, uh, one of your bucket lists, um, you can be sure to take it off of your list when you decide and study in our college. Um, we're located in British Columbia as what um, Francis mentioned, the same province where Regine's um, uh, school is located, Kwantlen. So we are in the same um, province. Uh, however, we are up north. So from the greater Vancouver area, you have to travel to the northeast specifically to get to our region. And it's called the Peace Region because we have the Peace River. Um, so from the Philippines, we have direct flights, I believe, by a Philippine airline. So you can arrive to the Vancouver International Airport, but make sure that your domestic flight is also arranged, okay? Because you have to um, fly to our region, uh, domestically speaking. Um, and make sure that you have booked which camp uh, in the exact campus that you are attending. Uh, we have... Um, airports in both cities of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. So make sure that your domestic flights are, um, are, are um, in those campuses. Kasi medyo um, challenging or medyo expensive yung mag-switch or mag-travel from one city to another. Okay? So we don't wanna, we don't want you to go through that hassle. It will cost you about $250. 200 to $250. Um, so yeah, kung anong campus ninyo, then you arrive at ninyo, okay? Uh, that will take you about an hour and a half from Vancouver. And I would like to just share the quick information about our region. If you stay in our region after studying, you can actually um, claim additional points under provincial nominee, which is uh, the category under regional district of employment. Um, Ibig sabihin yan, if you stay in our region without doing anything, you're just in the region, you're, you're, you, you're um, living there after studying and you're working full time, you can get additional points. It's important because not all regions in BC has equivalent points. Okay, For this region, however, we have a very high points under this category. Here's a quick video of our biggest city, Fort St. John, just so you can see what the city looks like. Fort St. John isn't just some one-horse town in the middle of nowhere. We're a vibrant, active, adventurous community with diverse landscapes and amenities. We are driven by sports and outdoor activities year round. With over 17 ball fields, three local golf courses, 20 parks and green spaces, 12 campgrounds, hotels and motels, three NHL sized ice rinks, one indoor raised Olympic sized speed skating rink, indoor running track, malls, bike trails, horseback riding, hunting, fishing, exploring, active night skies and the people that pull it all together, multiplex movie theater, high quality dining and nightlife. What you want, we have it, with the snowshoes to prove it. Fort St. John, the energetic city. Okay, so as you can see, um, our city, Fort St. John, which is the biggest city in the region, has everything a normal city has. Even though um, we are as, not as big as, say, Vancouver area, the greater Vancouver area, um, whatever you need in uh, from a city, we also have it. As a matter of fact, I mentioned earlier that 
Uh, both cities of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John has their own airport. Um, more information about the college. We are a public institution in Canada, Republic College, meaning our programs are postgraduate or permit eligible. Um, we're also a DLI, our designated learning institution. And there's a lot of um, benefits if you study in a public college. For example, other than the postgraduate work permit, you can actually um, work on campus and that's on top of your um, 20 hours per week. Because um, student visa holders or study permit holders, uh, if you're an international student, are automatically allowed to work 20 hours per week. However, if you find work on campus, and there are, it's not always available though, but there are work on campus. And if you're able to um, secure a job on campus, that's not deducted on your 20 hours per week, okay? And of course, um, you can work full-time during your vacation. Now we have five campuses in total. I only mentioned two. Uh, that's the Fort St. John and Dawson Creek campus because, um, our other campuses are not open to international students. So across the, um, the region, we have um, campuses in five different locations. To give you an idea how massive is the land area that we cover, we are, we are almost the same size as the Philippines. Is the figure here, sa baba, the 300,000 square kilometers, that's the size of the Philippines by land area. So you can see um, the peace region is slightly bigger as compared to the Philippines. And when I mentioned about having um, campuses in different parts of the region, if we compare it to the Philippines, basically meron kaming uh, campuses in different parts of the Philippines. That's how massive um, the land area that NLC covers. And we are the only tertiary institution in the region. So if, so if ever you want to study in Peace Region and you don't want NLC, you don't have any choice. <laughs> um, NLC is your only choice because we're the only tertiary institution in the region. Um, I have a separate slide for the programs that we offer, a very um, specific one, but we have varieties of programs ranging from business, arts and sciences, health and whatnot. And later on, I will show you the, um, the list. Uh, we also have a, a safe and supportive environment. As a matter of fact, we have a very uh, active uh, Filipino community in the region, both the cities of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. And right now, I'm happy to inform you that uh, the Philippines has become our top market in the college. Um, the number of Filipino students that we have on campus is uh, higher than Indian students. And if you don't know, India is um, the top market for Canada. I mean, all um, colleges and university in Canada has a huge number of Indian population. But um, for NLC for Northern Lights, I think in May 2021 and September this year, um, the number of Filipino students um, is higher, slightly higher, uh, which is good and not good at the same time. <laughs> it's good because you know um, it's not as it's not as if um, the environment will be completely unfamiliar. Uh, it's not as good because that would mean um, the number of um, seats we have for the Philippines uh, for some program has become limited uh, because we can't have too many of uh, Filipino students in one program, like 90% of the seats goes to that Filipino in that program. So that's not good because um, institutions in Canada, especially the public um, colleges, still values um, diversity. So that's the downside of it. But so familiarity wise, we have a lot of Filipinos in the region, not only on campus or the students that we have, but actually in the in the region and it's surprising because when i heard about dawson creek and fort st john before i would not have thought that there's filipino in the region apparently the filipino that we have um in 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 our cities are actually from elsewhere in canada they moved to the region because they saw the potential of the region in terms of the job opportunity uh the safety of the of the environment plus the cost of living 
which we will discuss later on. We also have a very good international student support. As a matter of fact, we have two Filipinos in the, in the student support team. One in Dawson Creek, one in Fort St. John. And it, the one in Fort St. John, Maureen, is actually uh, one of our alumni. She graduated this year and was hired by the college. Later on, we have a video of her when she was still a student, talking more about you know, the experience and whatnot as a, stu as a student in the college. So you'll see that later on. We have, um, okay, our Dawson Creek campus, which is also our main campus, is the Center of Excellence for Aerospace and Clean Energy Technology. For aerospace, if you are interested in studying aircraft maintenance technician, for example, it's a program open to international students. It has a lot of potential because the job is high in demand, plus it pays really high salary. So you might want to Consider that, especially if your background is in aviation or engineering. Those, um, you know, those profiles are highly encouraged to study or take the aircraft maintenance technician program. For clean energy technology, Canada is known to uh, transition. They are currently transitioning into uh, being an eco-friendly country instead of, you know, um, um, harmful energy or sources of energy. You're, transition to clean energy once. For example, the liquefied natural gas, which you can actually find in Dawson Creek. So it's a big or huge um, project in the North BC. You can look it up and see the potential economic growth of the, the region. And here are the usual information that you guys are looking for, um, especially if you're gathering information. I know that for a fact, that's why we are going to focus in this information. First off, our tuition fee. Our tuition fee is around 11,000 Canadian dollar per year. Um, actually, it's not even 11,000. Um, some of them are just 10,000, 9,000 dollars. You will see later on because I have the list of the tuition fees as well. Um, Northern Lights College is one of the lowest tuition offers. Um, one of the colleges that offers a very affordable tuition fee in the whole of Canada and probably the lowest in British Columbia for a public college because there's a massive difference between uh, private and public institutions. Normally in Canada, public institutions or public colleges and university are uh, more expensive than private. Um, but our tuition fee is actually a part with private institution and we are a public college, meaning all the benefits that the public college has, which I have mentioned earlier already, you also get to experience that without paying um, so much, okay? And that means the tuition fee per year is equivalent to two semesters already. The, the tuition payment you can pay in two options. First option is um, the full one-year tuition fee if you are financially capable to do that, or if you're applying under SDS. If not, then you can only um, pay initially the $6,000 Canadian dollar. That's the required initial tuition deposit for all of our programs. Uh, that also covers your first semester. After the tuition payment, that's the time you will receive your letter of acceptance. But don't worry because you will only be required to pay the tuition once the admission um, confirmed that you have been accepted. Okay. Accommodation option. Okay. Um, I, I know that there's a lot of Filipino uh, community in our region, but uh, probably some of you don't know anyone from our region or from the city of Dawson Creek and Fort St. John. That's fine because you don't have to worry about the accommodation or where to you know, leave while uh, if you decide and study with us. We have an option for you. Uh, you can choose between on-campus or off-campus accommodation. For on-campus uh, or student housing, that will cost you $520 a month per student. It's a four-bedroom unit. Um, it's a four-bedroom unit for one student per room. One student per room, uh, and that means you have your own privacy. Okay, um, 
At the same time, the $520 will cover all your utilities such as water, internet, and electricity. The only exemption is the food. So you have to have a separate budget for the food. But there's kitchens. You can actually cook your own food. For off-campus accommodation, it's a lot cheaper as compared to on-campus accommodation. So what I normally recommend to students is go for the on-campus accommodation temporarily for, say, two months. And then after that, um, go and explore. But in two months' time, kasi, uh, you'll, you'll be able to explore the city na and get to meet other international students then who, you know, if you click and you think you can live together as roommates, for example, then you can um, share expenses. You can be roommates and share expenses. That's what usually... Um, the students do. But if you want to go for off-campus accommodation straight away and hindi nyo option yung on-campus accommodation kasi nga mas mahal siya, it's fine. Meron tayong, I, I, like I said, meron tayong mga um, student support on campus. They sometimes um, do posting about available um, accommodation of campus. So don't worry about the accommodation. We have options for you. And here, to give you an idea about the cost of living in our region, the minimum wage in British Columbia as of June 1st this year increased from $14.60 to $15.20. And if we do the math, I included the computation here. <laughs> um, in a week, you'll be earning $304. If you're only working 20 hours per week, like I said, if you're able to find work on campus, that's on top of the 20 hours per week. Um, in one month time, you can expect uh, earning of $1,200. The cost of living in our region per month is around $700 to $800. Of course, it would depend on what kind of accommodation um, you're renting and how lavish is your lifestyle. If, you know, hindi ka naman laging tumakain sa labas. <laughs> Or next to take out, um, you cook your own food and you are sharing expenses with a roommate, for example, uh, it will cost you less, of course. So that means your part-time work 20 hours, that's the minimum, um, you can actually cover your um, daily expenses. The, the $800, $700, $800, the, the cost of living that I mentioned earlier, covers everything from your accommodation to food to transportation, um, insurance, and um, mobile plans, stuff like that. So, kaya siya. If your plan is to, you know, be able to sustain yourself, then if you go to our region, the cost of living is very, very affordable. Now, here is a short video of Myrene, including Myrene and another student to tell you more about their experience studying in our college. Taking the risk to come to Canada is something that is totally worth it. It's worth it because it's a country that is opening the doors for international persons it's given opportunities and it's a country that is always going to recognize the respect for the other. My name is Carolina Arango and I am from Colombia. I came to Dawson Creek in 2018. I'm Irene de la Peña Tesico. I came from the Philippines. I arrived here last September 2019. So I've been here for six months and as for my experience, I'm really happy. Very gratefully happy. And I still can't believe that I'm here in Canada. I love this college. It, I love my instructors. They are always willing to listen, to respond to your doubts, and to help you, to provide you all the information that, that can help you make the learning process easier. So since I came here, I think the best part is the people. The people in here were so friendly. They're so accommodating, and they help me to become a better person. It's something different. It's, it's a city that offers you a connection with, with the nature, and, it, and it's beautiful. There's lakes, there's these um, sunsets and sunrises that are magical. I think 
they better choose Northern Lights College. Not only because it's affordable, but also the people in here, the instructor, the staff, they're willing to help you with all your needs. Not only specifically in your studies, but also in your personal lives. I think if I'm not here in Northern Lights College, I will not be who I am today. It, it's amazing and it, it, we never imagined it was going to be like that. So it surprised us, but in a, in a good way. Okay, Myrene, as I mentioned earlier, is now working for NLC as a student support. So if you happen to um, choose our college and attend the, the first Asian ca um, campus, you will meet her there. So, yeah. <laughs> Next off, our job, op uh, job opportunities. I cannot emphasize this slide enough because there's a lot of job available in our uh, region. You can see here in the um, graph, I included the um, website, workbc.ca, labor market outlook for Northeast British Columbia, specifically in our region, the job opening composition for the next 10 years, for 2019 to uh, 2029. So 47% will be coming from retiring workers and Canada is an aging country. So a lot of retirees um, in the incoming years. Uh, and that means um, job, op job opening. Because, you know, if someone is retiring, then the position will be vacant. So someone else will have to take that job, right? 53% um, will be coming from economic growth, which I mentioned you earlier. LNG project is one of, was one only of the few um, project that is happening in the North BC that will create a lot of job um, opportunity. Uh, and that means for the next 10 years, there will be 18,000 available um, job openings. 18,000 may sound small if we're talking about the Philippines, but if we're talking about Canada, especially our region, 18,000 is actually a huge number. To give you an idea, the population in Dawson Creek is only about 12,000. Fort St. John is about 20,000. So um, the two cities combined is a little over 30,000. And the unemployment rate in our region is very low, meaning almost everyone has jobs already. So yung 18,000 na mag-open, the, the people that will have to take on those jobs will have to come from elsewhere. And you know that's where international students comes in and we expect that international students will eventually um, become migrants or you know they can secure their permanent residency and perhaps stay in our region to fill in these vacancies. That's how badly we need people, especially in our region. I know that um, jobs are important to you or you know, probably one of your major concerns if you're um, planning to study in Canada, but honestly, when you get there, the finding job becomes the least of your concern because that's when you realize that hey, there's a lot of job opportunities, there's a lot of job um, um, vacancies. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, we have students, part-time workers who are being offered for jobs. Apat na job offer, imagine that. Pero syempre, you can't say no to those four because you can't. Um, you don't have enough time <laughs> uh, to work part-time. It's very limited if you're still a student. However, once you finish your study and you're working full-time, then by all means, you can work however um, how, however long you would want, you want to work. But as a student, you're only allowed 20 hours per week off campus, okay? So that means um, majority of our students, instead of um, four jobs, meron silang minsan dalawang um, part-time work. Then again, there's those that's only part time, so it means um, rotating then your schedule, for example. So there's a lot of opportunity, and at the same time, I need you to understand that NLC is a community based college, meaning the kind of programs that we offer to international students are the kind of um, careers and jobs that are that are needed in the region, in the in the industries that. Uh, uh, in shortage of workers. So opportunities to work is very, very high in our region. You will see later on the list of the programs that we have. And we don't 
offer that many program for international student kasi limited siya sa mga klase ng trabaho or profession na talagang may shortage sa region namin. And NLC, the location of NLC, our region is four seasons. So Dawson Creek, Fort St. John, and any other city in the region gets to experience uh, winter, spring, summer, and fall. During the winter season, it's cold. I'm not going to downplay that, downplay that or sugarcoat it. It's cold. <laughs> Negative 15 is cold, especially um, if you're not used to it. Say, if you're from the Philippines, like us. Um, and during the peak of the winter season, it could reach up to negative three. Yikes, that sounds scary, but actually it's not. Because um, you're only going to get in trouble if you go out without wearing proper winter clothes. Okay, so if you're going outdoors during the winter, you have to make sure that you're wearing proper winter clothes. Other than that, you'll be fine. Because any, anywhere that, any indoors, Say the campus accommodation, even in the restaurant or even in the car, may mga warmers in heaters, yeah. So you can you're okay. And you know, you get to actually experience the winter if you want to experience that. Because I know that the Vancouver area doesn't get snow. It rains nine months out of twelve, you know. Um, but for us, um winter season, we get to experience that also because each season only lasts for three months. Every three months, you get to experience different um, season. For spring, summer, and fall, we're quite familiar with the temperature. It's only the winter that's going to be, that's gonna be a little challenging, but you'll be fine. Part of our orientation, especially for winter uh, intake students, generally, um, my orientation about winter clothing. <laughs> just, so, just so you know. Um, where to find these clothes and what kind of clothes you should be wearing during the winter. One short video about the festival, winter festival that is being celebrated in our region, especially in Fort St. John. I've been coming to the High on Ice Festival in Fort St. John for five or six years now. And what I love about it is the town is just so welcoming. There's just great people everywhere doing all kinds of different things. It, it's always so interesting to meet new people. Even though most of the time they're bundled up, you don't get to see much of their faces. There's so many activities from morning to night, and there's so many people coming together to celebrate winter. You get all walks of life that are able to actually come and enjoy this festival and then add six professional carvers into it. It's just like, it's a once in a lifetime experience. See, it's not so bad. You can, there's actually, you know, activities and festivals during the winter season, so you'll be fine. Now let's go to technicalities. Um, the Philippine market has earned a lot of um, favors, <laughs> not really favors, but um, privileges from the college. For example, IELTS. Um, we have IELTS waiver for all Philippine passport holders. So if there's anyone attending this event who's not a Philippine passport holder, unfortunately, this one's not applicable to you, okay? But if you're a Filipino and you finish four years bachelor's degree, you don't need to submit an IELTS test result or any other English proficiency exam. We don't we don't even require medium of instruction certificate. All you have to do is submit your TOR uh, and diploma. That's it. Uh, but that also means if you're not a degree holder, if you're not a bachelor's degree holder here in the Philippines, that means you have to submit an English uh, proficiency exam, such as IELTS, PTE, TOEFL, for example. Okay. Um, yeah, um, for more information about this, just talk to Catherine and Francis here. They know the mechanics of the IELTS waiver. So, yeah, but first off, if you're a Filipino, then chances are you don't need to submit an IELTS test result. Okay. And here's the complete list of the programs that we offer to international students. As you can see, there's, that's not a lot as compared to other colleges. That's because, again, we are very focused on what is needed in our region. And that means whatever program you choose in the list, 
there's going to be available job for you um, after studying. I just want to highlight a um, few programs here. We have three post-degree diploma program. Um, only bachelor's degree graduates can apply to this program since it's a post-degree course. Uh, we have business management, health administration specialization, information technology specialization. These three programs are the first three programs that becomes full whenever we open the, the college for admission, we, whenever we open the admission. So please make sure that you communicate with Kenata because they know when the deadline is. Um, and it's approaching, by the way. <laughs> um, so if you're interested to apply to any of this program, just you know, let them know. And majority of our programs are offered for two years because we would want you to get the three years work permit after studying, the three years postgraduate work permit that can um, help you um, have enough time to work on your permanent residency. Because we want you to stay. That's the bottom line. We want you to stay um, and, you know, uh, perhaps stay in the region because we badly need people. Uh, also, we have aircraft maintenance technician, which I've mentioned earlier. It's a very good program. Land and water resources, um, social services worker diploma, uh, business management, even cosmetology. If you're interested to, you know, um, hairstyling, cosmetology, basically. Um, culinary arts, we also have that. And we also have um, university transfer program. University transfer system is a system uh, established in the, all of public colleges and university in British Columbia. Basically, it means you can study two years in our college of any associate degree program, and then you can transfer all the credits to any university in BC and study two more years with them to get your bachelor's degree. So instead of studying four years right away in a university which costs, which, which you know, majority of them costs, uh, they're very expensive. I uh, can study two years with us, paying our rate, our tuition fee rate, which is very affordable, and then two more years in the university, okay? And K-12 graduates are highly encouraged to do this. And normally K-12 graduates are the ones interested in doing the university transfer. Because based on my experience, if you're a mature student, say if you already have a bachelor's degree, you're probably you're not interested to get another bachelor's degree anymore. All you have to do after studying is work, right? So in this uh, particular um, pathway, usually people are to my line. Requirements is very straightforward. Just submit everything to Kanata. We also have the NOC application form, which you have to fill out, by the way. Um, and application fee of $100 is waived for Filipinos. Again, not just IELTS, but also application fee waived. Uh, we don't do that for other countries. I'm handling the, the Southeast Asia market, right? And we don't waive those to other countries. Philippines lang talaga. For now, I'm not sure if it's going to change. But um, to be sure, please start your application so you don't have to you know, submit IELTS or pay the application fee or the application fee and whatnot. But yeah, um, please communicate with Catherine and Francis here if you have questions about the process because um, I've been working with them for quite a while now. Um, and effectively, we're working very, very well. <laughs> so they know what to do with your application. So um, I'm very confident if you're going to know, start your application with, with Kanata. And in a nutshell, very, very quick, if you're looking for a college that offers affordable tuition fee, with the IELTS waiver, public college, meaning all the benefits of a public institution, you get to experience that as well, better job opportunity, lower cost of living, and if you want to, again, experience the modern lights, then perhaps NLC is your study destination. That actually concludes my presentation. Thank you again, everyone, for attending this event, and thank you for Kanata for hosting this event. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Miss Jamie, for that very wonderful presentation. Uh, it's nice to know that uh, Filipinos are top one uh, in terms of uh, international students uh, studying in Northern Lights College. Okay, and again, uh, Ms. Jamie will be available uh, for the Q&A later.
Our final speaker for tonight is the face of Canada. She is an education counselor and also a vlogger that uh, helps international students who wants to pursue their studies in Canada. Let us all welcome Catherine Manas. Hi guys, thank you Sir Francis, thank you uh, Miss Jamie and Miss Regine for today's presentation. So hi everyone, I hope you guys are safe and well at the comfort of your home. So I'm going to be very quick with my presentation because I know you have a lot of questions for our school representatives for tonight. So once again, welcome to Study in Canada webinar with Kanata Education. We are a consulting agency located in Metro Manila, and we are helping students fulfill their dreams of studying in Canada. So what are the benefits of an international student in Canada? First, um, as, an, as a student, of course, you must be enrolled at a designated learning institution. You should be making progress towards um, completing your program. You should respect the conditions of your student permit and stop and leave Canada once your permit expires. Also, as an international student, you are allowed to work in Canada. Um, you can work either on campus, off campus, and um, through your co-ops if the program has uh, co-op. Okay, so on top of your off-campus jobs, you can work on campus. This highly depends on the availability of jobs inside the campus. So you don't need a work permit, but you must be a full-time student and holding a valid student permit. Um, off-campus jobs, these are jobs outside the campus. Of course, these are the establishments you can apply to, such as the coffee shops, cafe, restaurants, gas stations, salon, all those stuff you can apply. And then um, if your program has a co-op, so co-op is the same as um, an OJT in the Philippines. So it could be paid while doing your co-op. So you can um, get jobs uh, altogether through these three avenues. So during school semester, you can work 20 hours per week uh, for off-campus jobs and then uh, 40 hours per week during your semestral breaks or holiday breaks. Okay, another in, in exciting benefit of an international student is that you can stay in Canada after your program, or this is what we call the postgraduate work permit. Now, if your program is less than eight months, you are not eligible for, for postgraduate work permit. So schools are not offering six months program because you are not required to have a student permit. Um, you only need to go to Canada as a tourist and you can study directly if your program is less than eight months or the six-month program. Now, if your program is one year, you are eligible for one-year postgraduate work permit. And if your program is two years, you are eligible for a three-year postgraduate work permit. Now, some students, the program they are applying are only um, for one-year program. So what they can do is to get Another one-year program, so they will be eligible for the three years postgraduate work permit. So this is the one plus one program. Okay, so most of our international students are bringing their dependents as well. So who are considered as your dependents? This, this is either your spouse or a common law partner, and of course your children. So if you are an 18 years old and above and you are single and um, your parents, your titas and titas and siblings are not considered as your dependent. So if you are married, then you can bring your family with you. However, as an agent, we do not um, advise to bring your dependents when doing your application because it lowers their chances of approval when doing a family application. So we highly suggest that you finish your own application, have it lodged, and get the visa approval before applying for your family. But this is just a suggestion. <laughs> okay, so what are the documents required when applying for as a student in Canada? So our school representatives were able to list down the required documents. So what you're going to do is scan all these documents and send it to us 
we will send you an application package so that we can facilitate your application to either of the school present tonight. So what is the process? First, you need to consult with your counselor. So we are counselors here. We have Miss Christina and Sir Francis who can assist you. You can also book an appointment with us. I will post the link in the chat box. So consultation or assessment with your counselor is free of charge. We don't collect um, charges or fees for any of our processing. Uh, we will assist you for free. Now, um, during this stage, it is highly critical that you do a consultation with your counselor because this is where we will be advising you or recommending you the right program because this is very important when writing your study plan or statement of purpose. So as your agent, we will help you all throughout the application until the visa application lodging, especially with your statement of purpose or your study plan. So you don't have to worry about it. That's why we highly suggest that you consult first with your counselor. Once we're done with the consultation, you'll gather and submit all the required documents, apply to the school of your choice. So we will do the application on your behalf. Um, if you apply directly, we will not be able to assist you for free. Now, once we've done that, we'll wait for the letter of acceptance and you will pay for the confirmation slot by paying the tuition fee or the required deposit from the school. And then once we once you've confirmed your slot, you'll start now with the visa application process. Kanata Education will provide you with the comprehensive list of documents and requirements and assist you with your study plan writing. So once you've completed all the visa requirements, we'll, we'll, we will, um, what do you call this? We will review and submit it to the IRCC. Now, there are two types of visa application stream for international students. One is a regular stream or the most preferred option of our students when doing their visa application. So pre-pandemic, actually, um, at the moment, kind of the waiting time kind of like lessened from 13 weeks to 68 weeks. So we're kind of going back to the normal processing time, but still, it, it still depends on the IRCC. So it, it's not, it doesn't depend on the agent. So the requirements for a regular stream, you need to have a proof of acceptance or a letter of acceptance from your school, a proof of identity, which are your uh, valid IDs or passport. So you need to have a passport upon um, application. So if your passport is expired, uh, please have it renewed, okay, for visa application. Another requirement is the proof of financial support or the show money. So proof of financial support um, is required from your sponsor. So a sponsor is not required to be in Canada. So anywhere around the world, as long as they have access to their bank accounts. So how much is the show money requirement? It is one year tuition fee and one year living cost of 10000 Canadian dollars. So if your tuition fee, let's say, for example, it's around 15,000 Canadian dollars plus 10,000 Canadian dollars for your living cost, that would be a total of 25,000 Canadian dollars or more or less 1 million pesos. So this is the required proof of financial support coming from your sponsor. So a sponsor, we highly suggest that this is a relative uh, to second degree and they need to provide a proof of relationship and you need to pay one semester tuition fee. So the show money must be in your sponsor's bank account. It is not required to be at the student's bank account. You also don't need to bring this show money in Canada and you don't need to transfer this amount from your sponsor to your own bank account. So other than that, you are required to write your letter of explanation or the study plan or statement of purpose. So once again, for a regular stream, you need to have a proof of acceptance uh, or the letter of acceptance from the school, proof of identity, your show money requirements, and your study plan. Okay, for study direct stream, it's very straightforward or hassle-free type of application. If you don't have a sponsor, then you can apply through the study direct stream. So the waiting time for study direct stream is four to six weeks. Um, but most of our students are applying through the regular stream. Very few are applying through the direct to the through the study direct stream because of the IELTS requirement. So if the school is not 
um, requiring an IELTS score with a minimum band of six, then through the study direct stream, you are required to submit an IELTS result. Another, another than the IELTS, you are required to purchase a guaranteed investment certificate worth 10,000 Canadian dollars. So this 10,000 Canadian dollars will serve as your allowance in Canada on a monthly basis. So the bank will send this amount to you um, on a monthly basis while you are studying for your first year. So you'll getting back this GIC or Guaranteed Investment Certificate. Okay, other than that, you are required to pay one year tuition fee. So the difference between study direct stream and regular stream is that you don't need to provide a proof of financial support or show money with a study direct stream, but you are required to pay already in advance all the expenses you will incur when you get to Canada. So you are securing your one year tuition fee. Um, you're purchasing GIC for one year, which will serve as your allowance, and then you must submit an IELTS score with a minimum band of six and write also your study plan. Okay, so once again, we are Kanata Education. We provide free assessment, unlimited consultation, and free assistance all throughout your application journey to Canada. We don't collect processing fees. Once again, we don't collect processing fees. We only collect 10,000 pesos, okay? This is in pesos, which will serve as a security deposit, meaning to say you are confirmed to apply through Kanata Education. You will use this 10,000 later on for your visa application and biometrics fee. So technically, you did not pay us anything. You can follow us on our social media pages on Instagram and on Facebook. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more information of, um, to be, on how to become an international student in Canada. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. And now we will proceed with the question and answer portion. Okay, uh, tonight, uh, we also have Miss Christina from our team that will also answer questions about Kanata services. Hi, Christina. Hi, Sir Francis. Good evening, everyone. Yes, I have here a question for both schools. Uh, when is the application for September 2022 intake opens? And also my deadline ba for the submission, Miss Jamie? September 2022. September 2022. Uh, we will open the admission by October 1. So your application needs to be ready before October 1. This <laughs> Kanata need to submit the application on the same day. Kasi after noon, baka pag nagsabi kayo ng, ano, ng following day, baka puno na yung mga programs. <laughs> but so fast, the, the our seats are gone. Sells like half cake. So, yeah. So, okay, there's no uh, deadline for the application, but it will depend on the uh, availability of the slots. And uh, be mindful not, uh, hindi lang Filipinos ang nag apply for NLC. So, for, for Canada as an international student. So, uh, any uh, nationalities and syempre hindi pwedeng ibigay lahat sa Filipinos. Is that right, Ms. Jamie? That's correct. Yeah, uh, admission is open for as long as may seat pa program. Okay, what about in Kwantlen, Ms. Regine? Okay, thank you for that, Sir Francis. So for KPU, same with uh, Ms. Jamie with NLC. So applications will begin um, on October 1st for um, fall 2022 or September 2022 intake. And the deadline for limited intake programs is March 1st or until slots are filled. So ganun din, uh, depends on slots. So for limited intake program, mabilis din mapuno yung seats, mostly for Filipino students and other international students. And then for open intake programs, um, the deadline would be August 1st. Okay. Christina? Thank you. Um, I also have another question for Ms. Regine. For KPU, do you accept undergraduate students? Um. Yes, we do accept undergraduate students. Um, we also have the transcript, transfer credit system. So if they would like to transfer credits from um, their previous school in the Philippines, we can do that. We just need the 
um, transcript for assessment. So our faculties will be able to, to evaluate the transcripts and which credits could be um, transferred to KPU. And then if the student is actually pertaining to um, undergraduate programs, yes, he, he or she is eligible to apply to KPU. Um, but for post-baccalaureate and graduate diploma programs, a bachelor's degree is a requirement. Thank you. Okay. Uh, any programs available related to agriculture? I believe uh, Ms. Regine can answer this question. Agriculture-related programs. Yes, we do have um, programs for agriculture. As a matter of fact, we have um, horticulture technology, um, landscape horticulture systems, sustainable production horticulture, um, turf management spe specialization, and sustainable agriculture. And we also have ur urban ecosystems. All right. Thanks, Regine. Um, another question. Um, actually, this is for both schools. Um, do you help the applicant for their board and lodging and finding part-time jobs? I guess Miss uh, Regine first. <laughs> okay, thank you, Christina. Um, for housing, um, unfortunately, we don't have um, dormitories or housing inside the KPU campus, but we do have suggested um, dormitories or websites where they can find the list of um, trusted uh, housing for international students. So maybe I could share the link here on the chat box for our audience. And then um, the other question, sorry, what's the second question? Um, any assistance on finding a part-time job? Okay, thank you for that. So in terms of finding a part-time job, we do have an office for career development and services. So once they got admitted at KPU, they can talk to our education advisors for um, help for, for help and guidance in searching for part-time jobs. Okay, uh, Jamie. Yep. Um, I'm <laughs> Sorry. Um, for for NLC, um, we do have on-campus accommodation. Um, it will cost you five hundred twenty dollars a month. That includes everything now, water, internet, and electricity. Plus, you get your own room. Because in one unit, apat na student, but each student gets their own room. Pero kung gusto mong mas makamura, merong mga off-campus accommodation. Eh, mas madali maginap ng off-campus accommodation kapag ka, nandun ka na. So, uh, what I normally suggest is on-campus accommodation muna or student housing. And then, saka tayo mag... Um, hanap ng off-campus after, say, two months, ganyan. When it comes to work naman, um, we don't directly assist students to get part-time work in a, in a sense that merong employer, kung titing mo doon, no, uh, no such thing. I don't think any institution in Canada that do that. However, um, there are services. Uh, for example, meron kaming mga workshops for CV writing, interview preparation, may mga job postings then on campus kasi sometimes the employers or businesses in the in the city or in the region comes to the college kung kailangan nila ng part-time worker. Lapit sila sa college kasi alam nila na may mga student, international student that are interested to work uh, part-time. So mga ganong klaseng services, but still the effort will be come from you kasi kayo pa din yung i-interviewin, kayo pa din yung magsasabit ng resume ninyo, uh, things like that. Okay? But there are services. Don't worry. Okay, so basically uh, it is the responsibility of the student to look for their part-time jobs in Canada, but schools have uh, assistance. And also, mm -hmm. Canada, before going to Canada, we do a uh, pre-departure orientation for students. So uh, tips and advice before going to Canada. We also send uh, links, uh, website, wherein you can look for your accommodation and also for, to look for your part-time job. Yes. Right. Question is, uh, Miss Regine, 
what is the difference between study direct stream and regular stream? So dito medyo nalilito yung mga students about the requirements. So both streams can get you a student visa or student permit. However, meron lang silang difference. Same pa rin, you need to submit your passport uh SOP, yung statement of purpose, and also your school credentials. But for visa, uh, visa requirements, uh, for regular stream, you need to pay one semester tuition fee, proof of funds uh, coming from your sponsor, dapat relative mo siya, and then you don't need to take IELTS. And for study direct stream naman, uh, this one, you no longer need to submit a sponsorship or affidavit of support or proof of funds, but you need to pay one year tuition fee, uh, secure a GIC, a guaranteed investment certificate, wherein we will assist also in getting that one. And you need to take IELTS with six points to run a score. So, yun yung difference nila. So, both makakakuha ng student permit, but in terms of uh, financial uh, requirements, magkaiba sila. All right. Um, another question here, which is uh, related to the visa requirements. So when applying for LOA to the school, do we need to have the uh, proof of finances already? So in general, um, I, hindi naman kailangan pa because um, for the school application, we would only need um, your school credentials from either your high school or from your college, depending on uh, what program uh, you're taking. For the proof of finances, that will fall on the visa application process. But it's still advisable that students um, need to get prepared as early as um, during the school application pa lang because it's a very tedious um, process. So, of course, uh, we don't want you to, uh, you know, um, ma-ipit sa oras dahil um, because of the proof of finances. So, it includes proof of income and then there's um, the requirement that the funds or the show money should be on the bank account for at least four months. So um, if you can prepare as early as possible, that would be very advisable. Okay, next question here is regarding the scholarships uh, offered by the students. A while ago, uh, Ms. Regine uh, uh, discussed the uh, scholarship given by KPU. Can you tell more us about it, uh, Ms. Regine, and how, what is the application process for these scholarships and discounts? Okay, thank you for that. So we have um, scholarships and international tuition award for international students. So for scholarships, mas stringent yung process niya, and it's commonly um, offered to fresh graduates ng, ng K-12 system or the undergraduate students. Um, for the scholarships, it would undergo a stringent process. So meron mga interviews, um, leadership programs, or volunteer work, um, and other requirements. But for international tuition award, it is something that we can um, guarantee or offer to admitted KPU students. So ano tong international tuition award? So when a student applies to, let's say, a two-year program, the student will be receiving 2000 Canadian dollars pero hindi siya ibibigay up front to the student it will be reimbursed every semester so that would be 500 Canadian dollars per semester until ma complete yung 2000 Canadian dollars so kung nag-apply ka naman sa bachelor's degree the uh, the total tuition award would be 4000 Canadian dollars and ganun rin every semester it would be 500 Canadian dollars yung i-reimburse sa Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, uh, Ms. Regine. Uh, question here from a student. Uh, is there an age limit for international students in Canada? Uh, can you share how uh, much is approved and also uh, nag start ng pag aaral in Canada, Ms. Jamie? Um, no, there's no such thing as age limit if we're talking about you studying, if we're talking about education. Because no one can question a man why you want to study by that certain age. If anything, if whatever age you are, <laughs> pwede kang mag-apply sa college. We do not discriminate. Uh, any form of discrimination is not allowed in the any institution in Canada. 
uh, be the age, the gender, the you know, the race and whatnot. So you're fine. But I'm curious to know how old are you? Baka naman kasi nasa 30s ka lang, early 30s, late 30s, or early 40s. Pag nasa ganong age ka lang, you're fine. Meron kami mga okay. sadyate na mas matanda pa doon. So don't worry. Wala kami nga age limit. Okay, is it the same in KPU, Ms. Lajine? Yes, it's the same in KPU. Pwede pwede mag-apply kahit anong age pa yan. You're very, very welcome to apply. So, the main concern lang po siguro would be the admission requirements. So, for as long as you meet the admission requirements, you are eligible and very, very welcome to apply to any institutions in BC. Okay, speaking of requirements, uh, meron bang mga additional requirements for international students taking a postgraduate diploma degree or yung kung alam, master's degree na level uh, na education in Canada? Jamie? Or same lang, wala, walang additional, just they just need to submit their uh, school credentials and also waive naman yung IELTS, so no need to present IELTS yeah. for um, any English when, when, citas. Okay, when it comes to degree, I think it's, Regine is a lot, is more fit to answer that because we don't have any degree programs. We don't have bachelor's or master's. Perhaps Regine can answer the question instead. All right, Ms. Regine, any additional requirements needed by the student for the school application? For example, in this uh, specific program like Global Business Management or any postgraduate diploma or degree in KPU? Yes. Um, for most programs, um, your requirement lang talaga is bachelor's degree, uh, sorry, um, completion of high school, mostly for undergraduate programs uh, and the English proficiency requirement. But for graduate diploma programs, like as you mentioned, Global Business Management, there are additional requirements because it's on the level na po ng graduate studies. Eh. So additional requirements would include um, reference letters and statement of intent. So for graduate diplomas, it would be a bachelor's degree, the English proficiency requirement, um, letter of intent, and reference letter. And then for other programs like uh, human resources management, we have a GPA requirement of 2.33 or higher. But for other programs, walang GPA requirement. All right. Thanks, uh, Regine. Any more questions, Christina? Um, another question here, I think this um, is applicable to both schools. Um, can the tuition fee be paid through installment? So since um, for the as part of the visa requirement, um, if it's... Uh, study direct stream, so we are required to pay one year tuition fee and for the regular stream, we're required to pay at least one semester. Now, how about the balance? Um, can the students pay that in installment? Um, okay, I'll go first. <laughs> um, for NLC, the payment is per semester. Can pay, you can pay installment, but per semester. Say the initial tuition deposit that we require is only six thousand dollars, and that covers your first semester already. The main, the remaining balance can be paid uh, before when you up when you enroll for the um, second semester. Pero yung semester sa sa tayo pa siya into different installments. Um, no. Sa so, KPU naman, um, same as NLC, per semester din yung tuition. But um, you can pay your tuition before the start of your classes. And yung confirmation deposit natin na 2,000 to 2,500, ididedock pa yun sa tuition mo on your first semester. Okay. Uh, what will happen if the student receive a visa refusal for so for student uh, receive for visa refusals uh, there are three options so first option is if there's still time they can reapply for a student permit and continue their studies in Canada second is uh, they can uh, request for deferral and reapply for another student visa and lastly uh, they can do a refund can you discuss uh, Jamie and Regine Young refund process for uh, NLC and KPU, Jamie. Okay. Um, the 
refund for NLC, it's, indica it's indicated, by the way, on the offer letter before you pay the tuition. So make sure that you understand. So ibig sabihin nun, mababasa nyo siya, offer letter pa lang. So please read your offer letters. Kasi I have uh, received, I've been receiving increase about the refund where they want a, they want a full refund kahit hindi naman ref, uh, refuse yung application nila. Gusto lang nilang mag-refund kasi so yung nagbago isip or whatnot. So for NLC, yung refund is para lang sa mga visa Refu refusal. Okay? Less $300. The remain, all, all balances goes back to the student. Pero ibang usapan kapag ka, walang visa refuse at all. And it's indicated on the offer letter. So please make sure whatever document you're reading from the college, you read them carefully. <laughs> okay? Kasi responsibility mo yun eh. Magbayad ka ng tuition fee knowing the fact na alam mo yung information na yun. Okay? So, refundable siya, basta visa refuse. Oh, don't worry. Less $300. Less $300. Now. Okay. What about in KPU, Ms. Regine? Okay. I totally agree with Ms. Jamie. So, for KPU, yung confirmation deposit is non-refundable unless it's a visa refusal. So, kailangan nyo mag-send ng official email or formal email to KPU stating that your visa got denied or refused. So, we will process your refund for that. Okay. Uh, Follow-up question. If na visa refusal yung natanggap ni student, can they reapply and change yung program nila for KPU? Yes, they could change their program or even defer to the next intake. Pero yung deferral, um, it would really depend kung meron pang seat available for you for the next intake. As well as dun sa pag-change ng program, it would depend kung may availability pa ba ng seat for the next intake. Okay, uh, Jamie. Yeah, if you're changing program, your application will be automatically um, treated as a new application. So remember, you were only assessed with the admission based on what you initially applied for. Yes. If you're changing a program, chances are iba na naman yung, alam mo yun, yung technicality ng admission doon. So uh, we will have to submit a new application, but you don't have to refund the, the fee. Kasi pwede naman yung i-transfer. Nasa account nyo lang yun. So that number stays the same. So the payment stays in your account. Pero kung mag apply ka ng another program, completely different from the first one, you will be assessed again by the admission. Same process. And same with PPU, it really depends on the availability of the slots. Yes, that's correct. Especially the availability of the slot. Because <laughs> Okay, I think that's it for tonight. Uh, for, stu for other inquiries, we will contact you. Uh, and also... Uh, during our assessment and one-on-one -on -one consultation, you can ask all the details about study in Canada. Christina? And again, uh, Kanata Educational Consultancy Services, don't collect... Yes, yeah, so... Um... Yes, Christina. Yes, thank you so much, guys, for joining us tonight for program recommendation and personal consultation. <laughs> I highly suggest that you book through the link uh, posted on the chat box or wait for our um, call next week um, so we can give you a proper consultation. Because if we do this online, then we will not finish until tonight or tomorrow morning. Okay, thank you so much to our school representatives, Ms. Regine and Ms. Um, Jamie, and to all our counselors, Ms. Christina and Sir Francis. Um, I hope you guys have a great weekend and good night. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Nice meeting you, Thank Regine. Thank you for attending. Have a great weekend, guys. Bye, guys. Take care. Bye, guys.